Hillary Clinton's speech, and we were monitoring it, she apparently only made a glancing reference to health care. But Obamacare is a big discussion this week and over the past couple of years. Look, it's taken its lumps, and it's taken a lot of criticism, and much of it fairly so. One doctor says, don't look backwards. You've got to look forwards. All of this can be fixed through a healthy dose of three things, competition, technology and American ingenuity. But will a spoonful of free markets really help the medicine go down for Obamacare? Should we just let these mismanaged hospitals and high cr prices and high uh, premiums just take off? What about those office visits? How about FaceTiming your physician? Dr. Stephen Clasco says those are just some of the ideas that will fix health care. He is the author of the 2016 book, We Can Fix Health Care. The future is now. CEO and president of Thomas Jefferson University and Jefferson Health, Dr. Stephen Clasco, is with me. I said about you, nobody gets to come on here and attack Obamacare because that's already happened. Not, not fun. The countdown team wants solutions. So I don't want you to go macro. I want you to go micro. Give us some ideas that will fix this sooner rather than later, doctor. Well, you have to do a diagnosis and a treatment. So the 30-second diagnosis on Obamacare is it gave a lot of people access to an inefficient, inequitable, expensive, and occasionally unsafe health care delivery system and hoped the delivery system would self-correct. And, and it miraculously, didn't. it didn't. Right. Put a lot of subsidies in, subsidies go away, everything falls apart. So that's the diagnosis. Okay, done with the diagnosis. The treatment is really actually not that difficult. The treatment is to do what every other part of the consumer revolution has done and go from Blockbuster to Netflix. We need to go, it, at Thomas Jefferson, we've gone from being a hospital company to a consumer health company. And we've quadrupled in size. What does that mean? That means that instead of having people come to our emergency room, we can take care of them through telehealth and urgent care. Okay, we, so let, let's get to the FaceTiming the doctors yes. because that's, a, that's the fancy way, uh, telehealth is the fancy way exactly. of describing this. Yes. But how can somebody like that, when you're looking over the phone, because my dad was a surgeon, without a doctor seeing a patient diagnose something like renal failure or perhaps a suspicious lump? You know, it's, it's not just that everything should be diagnosed in telehealth. Some people should go to urgent care, but it becomes a navigator and you get people to the right place at the right time. We've moved about 30% of our expensive ER visits and people that didn't need to be in the ER in different venues. But you get penalized for that in, in, in the current insurance model. Okay, but it's very easy, and we love okay. free markets here at Fox Business, but to say leave it to the free market, isn't that what we had during the 70s and the 80s and the 90s with the insurance companies who ended up putting people who didn't have medical degrees in the position to say, I'm not going to okay that test, and people felt they really needed those tests. The, 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 the middle people in between the provider and, and, and the payers have to change. But here, here's the main situation. If you provide better access and better quality at a lower cost, you'll win. 85% of new insurance policies are going to be high deductible policies. Look at millennials, Liz. They're making decisions based on quality and cost. You know what we need? We need like a Metacritic for, for, for health care. People need to have good metrics well, like and dashboards. Like a consumer report. I have a better idea of what movie to go to based on being able to go on the net and be, seeing what every newspaper and what Fox News has said than I do about what doctor to go to. Mm. So and now that you get high deductible care, millennials are saying, wait a second, you want to send me to that surgeon? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate it. Well, uh, about this point, though, and, and the great Dr. Seth Feldheimer over at Columbia Presbyterian has often said, and this is in New York, he's often said, we need to wean doctors and patients off multiple tests. There are patients out there who get four stress echoes a year just because it makes them feel better. Somebody's paying for that, and it becomes overly expensive. Is that part of the problem here? And then how do you get the entire nation to get off so many tests? You know, that's a huge part of the problem. There's a great quote. It's hard to get somebody to do something when their salary depends upon them not doing it. So at the end of the day... Okay, you're putting on, on the doctors then. No, no, well, it's the doctors and the patients. But here's the point. Once you start having it be your money and not other people's money, if you give your daughter or your son a credit card and say it's unlimited, that's one thing. If the limit is $100, that's a different thing. So starting to do the right procedure for the right patient at the right time and being incentivized for that is very different than saying do three MRIs and you'll get paid a lot of money. Have the candidates listened to you? I, I have spoken with representatives from both candidates, and my book surmises a science fiction event where we stop blaming everybody else and comes up with the 12 disruptors <laughs> for the demise of the old health care that are so compelling that both the Democrats and Republicans use it as their health care platform. 
In fact, the, the first chapter is called 2016 when politics and healthcare became fun again. So you know it's a science fiction oh, book. Oh boy, I can't but, but, imagine But that. Both, both parties have said, yes, we would believe in about 10 of those 12 disruptors. So if you get past the Obamacare is lousy or, oh, just let's tinker with Obamacare, which is what both of these candidates have said, and actually say, what are the solutions? In my book are, are at least 10 solutions that both Democrats and Republicans could agree on. Well, I hope they read it and get the uh, Evelyn Wood <laughs> speed reading course. It's great to see you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I really Dr. appreciate Stephen it. Dr. Stephen Klasko.